All right, let's see. Setting up your meeting for Facebook Live. It looks like it's about to go live for us. Probably is already live, but okay. I love you never really know. All right. Daryl, I think we're live. Sounds good. Awesome. Hey, everyone. My name is Trevor Daly. I am excited to do another How I Shot It. This morning, I get to chat with Daryl Moore uh, from, you said it was Winston, is that right? Right outside of Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Yes. Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me, Daryl. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So, Daryl, why don't you um, tell everyone you mentioned where you're from? Why don't you actually, while you're kind of giving a, a brief introduction, I'm actually going to bring up your website here, if that's okay. okay. Um, and, and we can kind of show everybody, uh, let's see here. Of course, right when I'm about to do it, Daryl, I lost it here. Let me pull it up one more time. Not a problem. Um, so, guys, I'm excited to bring Daryl on because I actually, Daryl, I saw your work. You've been posting it in the uh, Magma community. And I just, I, I, I went to your website and I was absolutely blown away by it. But the one thing that really caught my attention, Daryl, was these photos that you were doing of your kid. And I can't wait to show everybody. Okay. Um, but, but before we even get into that, just tell everyone, you know, a little bit about yourself, how you got started and all that good stuff. Sure. Well, my name is Daryl Moore and I am the owner of Focus by Daryl Photography located in Kernersville. Uh, Winston-Salem is more recognizable. So Winston-Salem, North Carolina. I shoot weddings. I shoot portraits. Love shooting headshots as well. And I started shooting probably around 2010 is when I became serious with the camera. Of course, you know, wanted to make it official and became a business around 2014. So, you know, you on Instagram or social media, I use the hashtag I'm focused, man, because that's that's what we try to be. We want to be focused on our clients and, and treat everyone. Hey, we want to tailor your experience uh, to be special for you on your special day, whether that's a portrait session, a wedding you know, a headshot. We want to make it and tailor it to you. So that's where we're at. We're in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and we want to focus on you. I love that. I, I, I love, in fact, here, I'm going to real quickly, I just want to show off your Instagram. We got Focus by Daryl. Be sure to go give him a follow. Um, I, I, I'm going to go back to, let's show everyone that shirt real quick again. You say, I'm focused, man. I love that. And I, yeah. and I love how you said that you're focused on your clients and you want to give them that, that awesome, you know, tailored experience. What a, what a cool marketing message that you have there. Thank awesome you. Job. Um, and, and have you been able to use that uh, hashtag then every time you post photos and things? Is that kind of? That's the goal. Yes. We try to yeah. post it every single time. I try to encourage at the end of a session or a shoot to have my, you know, those who I've worked with to yell it out. I'm focused, man, because it just kind of drives a little bit more. That's awesome. Very, very cool, Daryl. Well, thanks Thank so you. much for being here with me. And I'm, I'm excited to share off your show of your work. Uh, like I mentioned in the beginning, I, you, you, I mean, your photos are absolutely beautiful. Your website and your Instagram, everything just is so pretty. It just, it pops. Um, and I love, one thing that I really enjoy about your work as well is the, you have this great balance. And I've mentioned this before with other people, but you have this great balance of light and ambient. You, you, it seems like you really know how to just mix the two. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of times when people think about using flash in their work, they they tend to think, well, I don't want my work to look like it's all, you know, a bunch, a bunch of flash and things like that. Right. But, but I think you, you can, you prove that you can use flash and still create this really beautiful balance, um, you know, of, of being able to incorporate, like we'll see in these photos here shortly, you know, the, the buildings in the background, or even like you did with the baseball. The baseball one is more impactful. In fact, do you mind if we just start with that one? Let's jump into it. Awesome, awesome. Let's actually pull that up. Let me, uh, let me go back to my screen here, and I'll pull this shot up, and we can talk about uh, this amazing photograph of your son here. Um, all right, let's jump in here. I'm excited to share this one. This is cool. Share your screen. All right. So Daryl, tell us about this super cool shot. Well, first off, you gotta, tell, you gotta give this, this kid a shout out. Who is this guy? This is my son, Jay. We call it his nickname, Jay. And he is eight years old, going on 18 very quickly. <laughs> and I would have to say that you know, I have to reward my kid nowadays for photography because I think we wore him out early on at two and three. We took so many photos. So now it's so more so, uh, Five, time for photos again. So um, this actually happened earlier this week on Sunday. We had about 20 minutes before sunset. And so with this particular shot, we went to the field. He's currently on a baseball team. Shout out to the Mets. They're seven and one currently. Nice. And I said, let's let's take a shot here. You know, what I used for this was a mag box as the main light. And then as the rim light, I used a mag sphere uh, coupled with a mag gel a full CTO mag gel. So that's how we created this particular shot. 
Nice. Now, I, I believe we have a, let me see if I can, you know what, let me, let me actually, I'm going to stop sharing here for a second. I'm going to go back to my screen and actually see if I can share it so that, um, so I can fly through these real quick here. Sure. Uh, let's go, let's go do this. So it looks like we have a BTS here as well. Can you, can you, oh, no, nope, that didn't come up. You can't see that, can you? I can't. No. Yeah. Let's try this one more time here. Let me see if I can pull this up. All right. I'm on screen. Can you see that now? I can see that. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so I, I, I want to, so you said you had the mag box here to the left and then you yeah. have a mag sphere and you had a full CTO on that as well. I did. Yes. You know what I love about this Daryl is that, I mean, you said 20 minutes before sunset and yet the shot you made is such an impactful, um, you know, you get this, this environment, this dark environment that just pulls him out. It just, I mean, it just makes him stand out so much. And I just love it. Um, so you brought down your exposure, obviously. Do you normally do that? Like some people will use high speed sync and some people you just drop your aperture and your ISO. What do right. you tend to prefer when you want to make something dark like that? Usually for this high speed sync. Yes. I actually shot this at one eight hundredth of a second. Nice. Very cool. That is so cool. And I love, there's another shot as well. In fact, it was on your Instagram. So if you guys missed it, if you haven't seen it, um, be sure to jump over to Daryl's Instagram and it's one where he's standing in the, in the bleachers, right? Was That's, that shot the same time pretty much, right? Same, same exact time. This one was shot later. The one on the bleachers was shot maybe 10 minutes prior to this. Uh, use the same exact settings, just different environments. Yeah. Did you show him this photograph already? I did. And he, he had to be fired up about it. I mean, that he was, was, he cool was excited. Shot. He was <laughs> excited. He said, dad, I look cool. I look cool. So, right. Someday, you know, someday when he's a professional baseball player, he's going to be looking at this. Or they're going to be showing this shot on, you know, and the World Series as he's up to bat. They're going to be showing when he was younger. And I mean, what a cool shot. I just love it. Thank and I, I even love the fact that he has the, uh, uh, I don't even know what they call that. What is that like for the sun, the glare, the. Oh, uh, eye black. Yeah. Eye black. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. He's, he's like, he's stoked. You're looking good. And, and that face, that face is just so much determination. Fantastic. So I'm going to show everyone real quick one more time that BTS so you can everyone, everyone can see that you get the mag box and then you get the mags here behind. Um, phenomenal, man. Just love it. Now, I'm, I'm glad that we get to talk about this next one as well, because this one also shows, you said Jay, is that his nickname? Jay, yes. So, and, and, and this one, I mean, totally different, but this is kind of goes back to what I was saying is where you're able to, you know, either do the high speed sync and make it super dark and have him pop, or you can, you know, incorporate where it almost looks like it was natural light. Um, but tell us how you shot this one here. So this particular shot, uh, this was shot at one four thousand. So I maxed out my camera. Um, the sun was behind us. So I used that as obviously the hair light, but I let for the main light, I used the mag box again. So um, using the mag box and I wanted to create a wide shot. So of course, in the behind the scenes, you can see him there. I uh, shot that with my cell phone just to show what it looks like with the light, the modifier, and hit the backdrop behind him. So, so Daryl, when you say, uh, so the sun, let me go back to the shot. The sun is literally the, the, the rim light hitting him on his, uh, on the, I guess it would be camera right, but on his left side of his face and in his arm. Is that right? That's right. That is so cool. I love how you actually combine that. And I mean, it looks like I honestly, if I was dissecting this shot and nobody told me how you created it, I would have thought you had a flash on the right. And, if, you know, kind of similar to what you did in the last one, which was that mag sphere with full CTO. And then you use the mag box on the left. But I love how you worked with the sun there. And you said you shot that at one four thousandths of a second. That's correct. And I used a 14 to 24. So I went super wide and I actually shot that at 14 millimeters. So for the full that shot. That is so cool. So Daryl, just for those people who have never done high speed sync, is there any tips that you would give them? Uh, anything that you would, you know, advise them to, to, to make sure they're, they're doing or, or maybe even explain just a little bit about high speed sync? Sure. With high speed sync, uh, the main thing is one, making sure you have the compatible equipment that's going to allow you to do that. I remember seeing it years ago and wanting to do it and my particular camera that I had at the time didn't have the capability for it. Uh, nowadays, you find most most cameras do allow that, um, you know, that to, to function and happen. So the biggest thing for me is shooting before I apply my lighting is to shoot for, you know, the exposure and how I want to expose and what I want my backdrop to look like, uh, mm -hmm. including my subject and my environment. And then from there, I just fill in with the light. And depending on how many sources of light you have, you, you know, you can tinker with it to, uh, you know, to your choice. 
Um, but obviously you just expose for the background in your subject and then add in your light. And honestly, it's very, it's simple. I think a lot of times photographers, we can complicate a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's a pretty simple process. Yeah. You know, I, I find that uh, the one thing to keep in mind when you're doing that high speed sync is that you can go through batteries pretty fast, um, sure. especially if you're firing at, you know, higher powers. And so always just make sure that it's funny when I'm doing, doing high speed sync, I love to do it like in engagement sessions and things like that. But at a wedding, if I know I'm going to have to be using those flashes later on during the reception, it's like, right. well, I don't want to, I don't want to go through those, those flashes too quick. So sure. um, you know, burn through them. But Especially the 8200s when you, you know, the lithium batteries, I, I don't have backup batteries. I, you know, so you can't just throw double A's in there. So, right. um, but, but those are really cool, man. That's, those are so cool. I, uh, there's a, a few shots popping in. Uh, it, hey, I love it. Your dad's actually watching. It looks like he says, now oh. that's my, is it Daryl Moore senior? Is that your dad? That's my dad. <laughs> I love it. You got, uh, I got a, full, a couple comments here. Coolest kid on the diamond, amazing image. Um, fantastic, Thanks. man. Super cool stuff. So let's go, uh, let me jump back over to the screen here. And I, I wanna get into a few images, um, share here. All right. So we have, um, oh, here's another behind the scenes of your son. That's, you know, real quick, actually, so you, you have two behind the scenes here. It looks like one, the mag box is a little bit closer than the other, or maybe maybe it wasn't moved. Maybe it's just the, the angle of it. But I lowered, like, I did have to lower it a little bit more. Yes. Lower it a little bit more. And it looks like it was maybe about four feet or so away. Is that, is that a good? Sounds about right. Yes. Okay. So cool. So in this shot here, I, and, and I apologize if you mentioned it and I didn't hear it. Did you actually Photoshop it out or was it just right on the corner of the, on the edge of the screen there? So it was actually, I didn't Photoshop it. Just having that 14 millimeter, I was able to get extremely close and then not get the light in the background or to the sides. That's so cool. What a cool shot. You know, I love the fact that you mentioned that your dad was watching there because, I mean, he's got to be stoked about this shot of his grandson as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he awesome. is. He is. Very cool. Well, Daryl, let's go into a few of these shots as well that you have from um, from some weddings or portrait sessions. It looks like uh, this one, it looks like is a bride. Is that right? This was a bridal session. Yes, this was out in Stokesdale, North Carolina at the Bella Kalina Mansion. Uh, beautiful venue. And um, we had the opportunity to kind of shoot around on the grounds. And for this particular image, I wanted to light her. I was wanting something different. And I figured, how can I shoot her within this, you know, this overpass area without actually being in there with her? And so I said, give me two minutes, I'll be right back. And I went downstairs and outside to capture the image. That is so cool. I now, so you went downstairs outside. It looks like we have a BTS here as well. Um, you know what I, I find interesting about this is on the BTS, it looks like you're shooting down low, but over here, it, it almost looks like you're shooting across. Were you able to go further back and get higher? Or did you so actually, for that particular one, I was shooting upward with a 24 to 70. And in post processing, I just leveled the image out. Oh, cool. I would have never have even considered that. So you actually just used uh, Lightroom to kind of take it from, you know, that angle to straight up. Right, oh, right. Cool. I, I honestly, in all my years of using Lightroom, I've never used it in that way to, to straighten out a photo like that. But I love that. It, it opened my mind now to think that, hey, if I'm shooting up an angle, I can actually just level it out like you did. True. It's true. cool. Um, and then you said the mag screen. Now there's there's two columns here. It looks like there's one that's really close to her. Okay. And then there's one kind of further back. Was it was it the one really close to her there? Yes. So we put the mag sphere directly behind the column straight in the middle. Got it. You're right behind and then just lit her. You know, we put it about a foot and a half above her and angled it down. Yeah. You know, th this is my favorite kind of lighting. Um, you, you know, in the art world, they call it short lighting. And I just, I love when people are short lit, when they, especially brides, when it hits them right kind of on the side of the face. I, I mean, you could almost say this is split lighting, but I just feel like her face is just leaning or looking a little bit to uh, right. the camera right, which kind of, it feels like that the, the shadow side of the face is more, you know, we see more of that, which that's, that's what they call short lighting. And I, right. I just, I love it. it it's very, uh, I don't know. It's just, it's always one of those lighting that just catches my attention. And like I said, especially with brides and stuff, I think it's fabulous. So agree, um, agree. very, very cool shot. Love it. Love Thank it. Love you. it. So Daryl, let's look at this, uh, this next one here. And you know, it's funny when we were just kind of chatting about the images before we went live, uh, this one, the first thing that actually I saw that caught my attention was the fact that you can actually see the sky. 
even though the sun is so you obviously, you know, above the horizon, this looks like it was probably shot maybe 30, 45 minutes before sunset, something like that. Correct. Uh, and usually, Daryl, when I see photographs like this, typically the sky is white, right? Um, in other words, photographers will just blow that out. And, and that was one of the things that was most impactful for me was just seeing that sky there. So tell us about this image and how you photographed it, how you shot it. Sure. Um, this particular image, we again, Magbox, as you can see, I like to use that a lot. Um, I was shooting with a, I can actually tell you what I shot this with. This was a 35 millimeter. And I wanted to ensure that A, I had the background exposed to bring in some of the color, like you said, and not blow out, you know, blow out the highlights. Um, but I also wanted to make sure that they popped in the midst of having a very bright background, that they were the focal point of the image. And so that's where the mag box comes into play. Um, again, using the sun as a rim light and then having the mag box held right, right above me, as you can see there in the image. What, what a cool shot. Um, you, you know, it, it, this is one of those photographs where it's funny, you put a couple in a situation like this and uh, immediately they're kind of like, okay, like, you know, this isn't like a crazy beautiful backdrop or, you know, right. like setting or whatever else. I mean, it, here's the BTS you're looking at, you're like, oh, okay, I guess we'll, you know, lean against here. And then when they see an image like this, I mean, they gotta be stoked about it. Um, it looks like what, what was behind them there? What is that? Is that part of the venue or is that, city i can't i can't on the on the right so there. in the background it it's some sort of warehouse so we were at a actual wedding venue um just kind of shooting over there however in the background it's some large taller buildings i think they're warehouses i because i actually i love again your eyes are drawn to the brightest parts of the image and and you know that's that's one of the things when you look at a photograph it just immediately you go to the areas where the light and the lines draw you and the sharpness and and the obviously the the uh uh, the contrast. And that's what I love about this is your eyes are drawn there. I think had you um, not underexposed it, there would have been a lot of stuff going on in that bottom right side of the frame that would have caught your attention as well. And so that's the other thing that, again, I just love how, you know, you got these lines going towards the couple, you got your sky looks beautifully exposed and amazing clouds and, and the sun and everything else. You got this incredible rim light on her hair that looks so pretty and it really makes it stand out. Um, and yet you got this beautiful lighting on them using the mag box. Amazing job, man. Love that shot. Thank you. I appreciate it. You know, and, and for those, uh, who, who like this, definitely go check out Daryl's Instagram. Again, I, I happened to just in my peeking around looking at it, I saw quite a few with this couple and it looked like quite a few were very similar in lighting it. I, I imagine, did you use the mag box quite a bit on this shoot? I did. Uh, I actually, that was the only thing I used for that session. Yeah. I know it's quite a few. Actually, Daryl, since we're talking about the mag box, is that is that kind of your go-to modifier? Do you use that probably more than all the others? I would say 80% of the time it's the mag box and the other 20% um, the mag sphere. Yeah. And you know, as, as we talked before, I told you I own all the products because I love mag mag mod. Um, but primarily I use the mag box, the mag sphere. For larger groups, I would use the mag bounce and I've used the beam a few times as well. So Nice. Yeah. That's very cool. I, I look forward to, to seeing, uh, you know, I, I was telling you, I, I, I love when I see, you know, photographers like yourself sharing in the Magmod community and kind of uh, describing how they're using these photographs. Um, there's another photographer, Esteban Gill. Uh, he uses the Magbox a lot, you know, on, on these types of things. And I, I just, I, I think it's fun when people kind of have their style that they, they, they kind of fall into. You know you have other tools when you want to use them, but it's like you see a photograph and you're like, oh, that's a Daryl Moore photograph. You know, it's because you can kind of tell. So uh, again, amazing job, man. Thank you. But, uh, do you mind if I share this? Uh, this I think it's this last shot here. Um, okay. Oh yeah, I love this one too. Uh, tell us about this one. So this was an engagement session. This took place at the American Tobacco Campus in Durham, North Carolina. When we were walking around the venue, we had you know taken some shots leading up to it, but when I saw the vast open area, I said, I've got to capture something that makes them pop from this entire area. So once again, we use the mag box because that's that's my favorite and that's my go to. And we wanted to ensure that we could capture them and then somehow make sure that, you know, we can remove the mag box um, and my assistant that was holding the mag box for me as well. So you can kind of see them there lurking in the shadows. Um, but that's how we lit this particular image. You know, I actually, I, I love how, literally, it was funny because when I saw this, I, I thought it was just the same image 
uh, double, I didn't even notice uh, the mag box and, and your assistant, you actually have them literally almost hiding back there. And do you do that thinking that, okay, I'm going to go ahead and Photoshop this out later. So I want to make it as simple as possible. Like, yes. is that a, a, a thought that goes kind of through your mind? When, when, especially with this particular image and when I saw the wide open area, I said, well, the easiest thing right now would be to use the Mac box to light them and get enough light on them. And then mm -hmm. we can just go back and Photoshop them, Photoshop, you know, the light out. Are you, are you doing like a plate image? where you shoot one without the mag box in it? Or, or are you normally just kind of recreating it um, using Photoshop? No, typically we'll shoot one with without the light, one with the light, and then just to ensure that we have a backup plan there. Yeah, yeah. So for those who, you know, who are, are new to doing that kind of thing, definitely, so if you have, let me go back to this. So if you shoot one with the mag box in there and then one without, then it allows you to take that window and just kind of pop it, you know, kind of, they call it a plate image. Um, that's awesome, man. And again, I don't know if you're doing this on purpose or if just a happy accident. I'm imagining it's on purpose because you, you definitely have an eye for these things. But I love how you got these lines just constantly coming in towards your couples and people. Um, it seems like that's something, uh, it's one of my favorite type of composition little tricks. And it seems like I see you using that a lot. Uh, it's, I, I imagine, is that something when you're out shooting, are you looking for lines and kind of ways yeah. of drawing attention to your couples? Anything that I can pull from the environment that's going to make the, the image look even more interesting to pull the viewer's eyes to the subject, I want to incorporate. So I've tried to be more mindful of that here recently. That's awesome. Daryl, these are, these are fantastic images, man. I, I really um, am loving just kind of going through these and looking at them with you. I want to make sure it's funny because I've been doing that and I haven't even uh, checked over. I just looked at those comments really quickly on the Facebook. I, if you don't mind, I want to jump back over real quickly to Facebook and just see if there's anything, um, any questions I might have missed. Oh, sorry, hold on. I just had my volume pop up here. Um, let's see here. Uh, you, you, is it okay if I keep you a little bit longer, Daryl? Yeah, not a problem. Awesome. We got, uh, let's see, William Nixon says a true light guru. I would have to agree with him. <laughs> Thanks, Will. Uh, let's see. Jay's ready for the big leagues. Amazing image. Coolest kid on the diamond. Absolutely. It's my son. Um, so here's a question. So Jill Nissen is asking, is this possible with a speed light? So maybe this is a good opportunity to kind of tell everyone what, what are you using? Um, so what, what are you using in the mag box? I guess maybe let's so, start with so in the mag box, depending on the situation, uh, but primarily I use an 8200. And if okay. need be, if it's extremely bright outside or if I'm trying to achieve high speed sync, then I love that the mag box provides an option for two, you know, so I can provide additional power as well. Awesome. And, and so fantastic. So, so Jill, uh, the question about having the, uh, this possible speed light, the 8200 is kind of like a, um, uh, an, an overpowered speed light of sorts. I mean, it's about 200 watt second is where you can get up to. Um, but uh, so, you can do that with a speed light. It is, you're not gonna have quite as much power, so you are gonna have to move that in a little bit closer. Um, but but yeah, if, if somebody is looking at gear, probably the best bang for the buck is those 8200s. They're fantastic, so. Great, great light. Um, let's see, we got Eric is saying, great work, Daryl. Uh, okay, so here's a question. Jill is asking, um, how do you achieve the pink glow in midday? Was that natural? I'm trying to think what image she was thinking pink glow. That's Jay's birthday shot, the wide shot, I'm assuming. Okay. Let me let me see if I can pull that up again. Um, let's see, because you didn't use any gels on that one, right? Correct. No gels were involved. And if, I, if I'm assuming that's the image, then that particular one, I did a combination of a sky swap and a gradient. You know what? That I bet you're right. Um, I, I can I can see what she's saying is I get I get it. So in other words, it was shot during the daylight hours. Right. And you have this pink glow, and so you used a, a sky swap, and then you said a a gradient Within on the sky room. swap. Is that right? Yes. That's a that's an awesome idea. I did that. You know what's funny? It didn't even dawn on me. How Jill? Thank you for bringing that up. You're so observant. It didn't even dawn on me because it looks so natural, um, and you made it. I mean, it just works so well. Absolutely love that. This is such a cool idea. I actually want to take my kid to the top of a parking garage and do something like this. I assume, is that, is that where this was? Is the top of a parking garage? You're exactly right. That's where it took place. 
You know, it's funny. I'll be, I've shot on parking garages before because I love the direction of light. So when you have couples like, you know, on the stacks and you get right. the, you, you get this great light coming in and I've shot there and it's amazing because there'll be nobody in the parking garage and you'll be shooting. And then immediately a security guard will be pulling up his golf cart. And I'm like, <laughs> where did you even come from? Like what? I mean, they must right. have there's something, but um, awesome. Awesome. Let me go back to the questions here real quick and, and uh, see if there's anything else. Uh, uh, I see this as a metal print on the wall. I totally agree. Uh, image is so clean. Great tip. Uh, my nephew doing great things. Very cool. Thanks so much, Vanessa. Um, what light, so Kenny, Kenny Clapp, okay. he said, what light model is being used with the Magbox? And I think you had mentioned that, the AD200. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. Eric was asking as well. Um, let's see. Watching from Winston-Salem. You got Ramito's watching from Los Angeles, Ramito Cervantes. Okay. Fantastic. So um, this is awesome, man. This has been a lot of fun. I, I had just a couple more questions I want to ask you, Daryl. I was wondering, um, you, you had mentioned the, the Magbox kind of being your go-to there. Um, when you're actually kind of thinking about these shoots and you're going out, is there a particular spot you kind of turn for inspiration? Uh, you know, how are you coming up with these ideas or is it just practice? What, what are you doing exactly? Kind of, how are you being inspired? I think for me, it's leading up to a session. If I don't know the area, I'm oftentimes trying to get there earlier uh, mm -hmm. before you know the client gets there so that I can kind of survey what I'm working with. And the great thing about MagMod as well is that you can pretty much use the products everywhere and, and, and create some beautiful artwork. So the inspiration comes from the environment and what I can bring from the environment, wherever we're shooting at, and then as well, kind of just vibing with my clients, you know, their personality and, and what I can use from the environment as well to bring them out, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you'd mentioned getting started, what would you say it was 2014 when you became an official business? Is that right? That's correct. Yes. So I, I feel like you've, you know, you your work is absolutely spectacular. Thank you. Where are you practicing? Where are you learning these skills and stuff? I mean, because in fact, we were talking a little bit before photography is, is kind of a side gig. Is that right? Or are you doing it complete full time? Because you have another job as well. I work full time. Yeah. So uh -huh. I do work full time. So this is the side business. So. so, I mean, how are you learning your skills? What like? I, I, yeah. I mean, For what, me, what practice what comes into play um, just, you know, linking up with other photographers trying to figure out ways, you know, how can we become more creative? Obviously in the middle of a pandemic, a lot more practice has taken place right here in the house or in the backyard um, using Jay when he allows me to, or if I say, hey, we're going out for ice cream afterwards, can you help yeah. me out? So um, for me, it's just taking the time to practice on my own versus waiting to practice when you have a paying client. That's the last thing you want to do is practice at that time. Yeah, I love that, man. So I guess, you know, that kind of goes along with maybe the last question I want to ask you, and that's uh, any advice for new photographers getting started. Um, I would say probably one of the biggest things I've picked up from you right now is just that kind of vibing with clients and being able to, to actually kind of, you know, when you think about it, it's kind of listen and really pay attention to what's going on. Um, and I love the idea of, of getting out there and practicing, especially with your son there. That's fantastic. Any other kind of advice that you would give uh, new photographers? Because it seems like you really got your stuff together and you're doing well. So, Well, thank you. Uh, I would have to say, because I've been there as a new, phot a new photographer, is to just keep it simple. I, th I think oftentimes what happens is that there's a lot of overthinking that takes place. And, you know, you get into the gear, the gear. I got to have this. I got to have this. I was that guy. I mm -hmm. made a little money, spent a lot of money buying a ton of gear. Um, at one point, you could look in my living room. And you saw all these different modifiers. And I was like, I don't have a studio and I'm not shooting every single day. So what went into play there is I started selling a lot of things because I had to simplify and just keep it simple and go, this, these are the tools that are going to work for me. There's absolutely no reason for me to buy additional things because I heard it on the latest blog or a Facebook yeah. group said, go get it. Um, so keep it simple. Uh, photography, it's an art. You practice, you work hard at it and, you know, you compete with yourself that's that's such great advice man because it's so true photographers we are so known to want to buy the the next thing we see an image posted we see somebody that created it with whatever modifier or flash or light or whatever whatever lens camera and we're like oh we got to have that we got to have that and then we go out and we buy it all and i you know i think it really what it comes down to daryl is is staying focused 
Yeah, I see what you <laughs> did. Focus, man. <laughs> No, but, but truly, Daryl, hey, man, I really appreciate it. Uh, this has been, Thank you. you know, inspiring to just listen to you and, and see the image that you created. You're, you're doing phenomenal work. And uh, I Thank appreciate you. you being here. And, and I appreciate you also joining the Magmod community and sharing your work there, because I know every time you've, it seems like every time you're posting, people are just so stoked and they love those images of Jay. So tell Jay, you got to go out and create more images because people love seeing uh, your good looking son up there and, and the images you're creating with them are just amazing. So Thank you, Trevor. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah. So, hey, uh, thanks again, Daryl. And you guys, if you haven't already done it, go be sure to give him a follow on Instagram. Um, I'll, I'll jump on our Instagram account as well and link him up in his stories. So be sure to check him out there so you can guys can go follow him. And uh, as always, we do these each and every week, these How I Shot It. So if you uh, uh, join us each week, it's kind of a little bit different. We like to make sure that we're, we're uh, you know, aware of the, the schedule of these incredible photographers and the time that they're taking to join us. So uh, Daryl, I, I appreciate you taking this Friday afternoon to do it. Um, Not a problem. Yeah. And uh, we look forward to, to chatting more with you. So stay awesome, Daryl. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining us. You guys have a good day.